Hi there, welcome to another video of the Vickers MG Collection of Research Association. We're really pleased with the response that we got from episode one, what's now episode one, of our look at the real machine guns in How Let Loose, but now we're gonna look at the real rifles in the British faction of How Let Loose. And what we've got are the number five, the number four, the Lee Enfields, the P Pattern 14, which is in the game, and as a bonus, we're gonna look at the short magazine Lee Enfield rifle, which should be in the game. The basic rifle of the British faction, is, or one of the basic rifles, is the Pattern 14. And that is this rifle here. It was introduced, the 14 gives it away in 1914. It was never really introduced as a widespread rifle across the British Army though, because by the time we'd ordered them and they'd been made in the United States, the short magazine Lee Enfield was in widespread production and being able to be issued across the wider British Expeditionary Force. So it's this great war period. But it's a Mauser action, so it's actually the same action as the German rifles were using in the Great War. Uh, it, so it loses the Lee, it's not a Lee Enfield, it's an Enfield rifle, made in Enfield, uh, and it operates slightly differently. So say that Mauser action, slightly different operation. When I was told that this was the basic rifleman's rifle of the Second World War, it sort of made me laugh a little bit because it wasn't it wasn't used by the British Army in that role at all. Um, it w was this, a similar rifle, the 1917 in .30-06, the American caliber was used by the Home Guard, uh, but I suppose it looks similar enough, perhaps, with the long bayonet to what should be there. However, there was a scoped version, and that was the British Army, the Australians, uh, that was the sniper rifle during that period, right up until the introduction of the number 14. The number four rifle, which is a truly Enfield, was probably one of the longest gestation rifles of the, of the British Army. First conceived in the early 1920s, it doesn't come into service until 1941. And it's, it's an iteration of the number one, number two, the number three is the, is the pattern 14, and then the number four, the Enfield Rifle Series. Um, it's, it's about mechanized warfare, it's about simplified production, uh, changing where the sight picture goes, where, where the sights are laid out, and also introducing the short pig sticker bayonet. So it's a much shorter bayonet so that you didn't have anything you know, hanging too low beneath your waist because the idea was that you would be in and out of trucks all the time rather than marching along. Um, yes, and it stays in service until 1955 with the British Army when it was replaced by the self-loading rifle, the R1A1. So this was the main rifle from 1942 onwards for the British Army. It equipped every British infant infantier. Uh, it was used widely across the Commonwealth. Uh, it replaced the number one Mark III, so the short magazine Lee Enfield, but that largely remains in service in the Middle East and the Far East for a little bit longer. But Northwest Europe, this is it. This is, this is the main rifle. Um, like I say, it was Empire and Commonwealth forces made these as well. So this is a long branch example. The example in the game is, the, is a long branch example as well. And normally they have this different woodwork. So this slotted woodwork on the top here is what's commonly associated with long branch rifles, which is a Canadian make. Replacing the number four was the number five next in the series. And it's, it was intended to replace it throughout the British Army, so not just in Far East, and it catches on to the nickname post-war as the Jungle Carbine because it's short in length, and it gets used to equip the Far East forces, um, certainly those that are intended to go and uh, fight over in the Far East at the end of the Second World War. So we do see it in Northwest Europe a little bit after it's equipped the 1st Airborne Division, after the Operation Market Garden, but outside of that, it doesn't really have that role. So. It's a shorter barrel, but the same 303 cartridge. They didn't reduce the power on that. So to try and absorb some of the recoil, we've got this sorbethine rubber pad at the rear, um, and it stays in service until the late 1950s, early 1960s with the Malaya and the Borneo confrontations. So a bonus rifle is the short magazine Lee Enfield, and it's the number one rifle. It is the, the ancestor of all of these. Uh, it was introduced in 1906. It, was widespread. It, it reduced the length, so it's short, and a magazine-fed Lee Enfield rifle. Uh, it's shorter, it's still quite long, isn't it? But it's shorter than the Long Lee and the Lee Metfords and the other rifles that were in service at the time. Uh, it is equipped with a very large bayonet uh, that was also, you know, quite surprisingly, also the bayonet that equipped the Lanchester uh, machine carbine, which we'll talk about at another time. But the... Oh, 
heavy stuff. Uh, but this stayed in service, again, being used across the Commonwealth. This is an Australian made example, uh, used around the world, all the way up to uh, the Second World War, into the Second World War, North Africa, Mediterranean, uh, British Expeditionary Force 1940, until it was replaced by the number four. It would be much more appropriate to include this in the game, as it was used throughout those theatres, um, but also it has the 10 round magazine, whereas the Patton 14 has a five round magazine. It uses the, the Lee action, which makes it quicker firing as well. Practical use of these is very, very similar in that certainly the number one Mark III, the number four and the number five, they've all got the same action, that Lee action. The number number three, the Pattern 14, is different because it uses a Mauser action, which is cock on open as opposed to cock on close. They are fed from a charger, so this five round charger uh, clip, stripper clip sometimes, here holds five rounds of ammunition. They come in bandoliers, that's how they're issued, 50 round bandoliers. And they're loaded through the top, so magazine changes weren't a thing. You'd basically be uh, loading up through there. You can change, you can physically change the magazine. So there's a there's a lever on here. You press that down and take the magazine out. But that's really only to replace it if it's damaged. It's thin tin plate. It was you know they didn't issue spare magazines. Even even for snipers, even for the sniping variant where you'd have a scope along here, you would still. Uh, be expected to hand load, you know, to, to manually load without a charger, either your single rounds um, into the magazine there or necessarily into the chamber. So to load five rounds, you take your, your charger clip, it's sorted in a special way so you can put it in uh, either way around, you put it in the top and then straight thumb down on top there, charger clip out, load forward and then as you're firing through, You're rejecting the cases. So with the with the SMLE, with the four and the five, they've got 10 round magazines, you're obviously using two charger clips, but with the pattern 14, you've only got one because it's only a five round internal magazine. So no chance to change a magazine there at all because there isn't a separate piece. Uh, in terms of their sights, you'll see that the, the number one has got this sight in front of the action here, and that ranges up to 2,000 yards. So you'd be expecting, you know, it certainly not doctrine of the day um, in the Second World War, you wouldn't see that being used that much. Um, there are other weapons that are going to do that much more effectively. And even in the in the Great War, and I, you know, certainly the, the number one and the, the pattern 14 were designed, they had these volley sights which would go out even further um, and be used en masse, almost like firing you know, bow and arrow, indirect fire, so that you get the arc and you're able to do, do that saturation piece with lots of rifles, maybe a company at a time. Uh, the, you know, that goes up to 2,000 yards. The pattern 14 is up to 1,700 yards. The number four with this type of rear sights, there are lots of different types, but this one goes up to, to 1,300 yards. Um, on this number four here, we have battle sights. So just simple switch from 300 to 600. That's all it was. We were very simply training soldiers. We were training them to fight, not to be marksmen. So let's give them a very simple, quick sight that they can change easily. Uh, and then the number five, we've shortened the barrel, that obviously affects the accuracy, and that goes up to 800 yards here as well. So, say so the four, the five, the number one, all get used largely in the same way. It's that number, number three that we have to consider uh, just using it for five rounds, and the slightly different cocking action which slows things down. So let's go and see how those different actions work and fire some of the rounds. Uh, but before we do, a uh, word from our sponsors, me. The machine gun changed the picture of warfare forever and the Vickers machine gun played a key role in this, being used extensively throughout the 20th century by many different nations and organisations. At the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association, we hope to share our passion for educating and informing people about the Vickers. To do so, we need your support to build new content and preserve the information, collection and archive for the future. Find our Patreon online at www.patreon.com forward slash Vickers MG. The first one that we'll demonstrate is the Pattern 14 rifle. And as I said before, this is a Mauser action, so it cocks on open, and we move it back. We'll load it with a charger, safety catch off, open, charger in there, bad charging by me, charger out, single round there, we'll put on on the top, and then we're gonna put it into the shoulder, fire up there, And we've got an empty chamber, empty magazine, 
and it holds open as well. So we can't close it until we depress the magazine platform. So the other rifle is the number four, and as mentioned, this is the Lee Enfield action, so it cocks on close as opposed to open, which makes it a bit of a faster action. You'll see that I'm pulling the trigger with my middle finger. That's a technique introduced in about 1944, but it's a habit that I've picked up from fast firing. These rifles are famous for being fired as the mad minutes, so 15 rounds minimum a minute. We're not gonna do that, we're just gonna do 10 rounds. So it's safety catch off, open the bolt. We're gonna load five in the charger, the same way as we did before. So straight down like that, charger comes out. And then to show, you know, if we had the scope on this, what we'd be doing is loading them individually. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we can pull it into the shoulder. and 10 rounds. So in summary, my thoughts, um, really it's the short magazine Lee Enfield, the SMLE, the number one Mark III that we should be seeing throughout the game. That Al Alamein period, these would have been in use with everybody in those British and Empire forces. Um, if we're looking at drill in Holland in 1944, then really by that period, we should be looking at the number four rifle uh, only. There's some possibility that the Polish Airborne, so the Polish, not the British, but the Polish Airborne was still using the number one Mark III by that point. But British Infantry, 43rd Division uh, in 30 Corps, they would have been, they would have had the, 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 the number four there as well. So um, consider, consider that as sort of the more historic approach. Clearly, there's some gameplay things to understand within those as well. Uh, but yeah, it, it really, we should be seeing that short magazine, Lee Enfield, and that number four. Of course, with both of those, there's a Vickers. So perhaps we should be seeing the Vickers alongside them as well, but perhaps we're a little bit too biased and perhaps we would say that. Um, if you like what you see, then please do support us. We're gonna be expanding this series. series. Let us know in the comments below if you do like that. Uh, but we've got the submachine guns to cover. So we've got a Lanchester, uh, available to us to perhaps talk a little bit more about. We've got the Stens, we've got Thompsons, we've got Firing Thompson that needs funding and supporting, so please head over and do that. Uh, we've got our revolvers and our pistols as well. So we'll cover off what we can, um, and yeah, thanks for watching.